what are some of the issues actors face and how can they be fixed? The economic rights are non-existent. Um, actors deserve the right to be able to fairly negotiate their contract because actors in South Africa don't get royalties. Those scenes that are very sexual, how, how do you guys navigate that? A lot of actors need more eyes on the set, even outside of um, intimacy coaches. Male actors have become very nervous to do their job because of, of the things that have happened. Welcome back to Palatable Politics, a show where we take the complexity out of politics and make it palatable for you. With me, your host, TJ Maslela, welcome to the show. In today's session, we're going to take a dive into the entertainment industry. And here to give us insight is none other than Ms. Nunu Kumaru, who has been an actress. You've, um, you are an actress. Mm -hmm. You've been in modeling. Mm -hmm. You've been in Odyssey Baya. There was a Houteng Maboning where you were the beautiful lady. Oh my goodness, that was so many years ago, yeah. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thank you for having me. Uh, always, always a pleasure. So can you walk us through those that might have, um, I mean, fine, Red Ink is out now. Mm -hmm. We've all seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, can you walk us through your journey to get to where you are now? How did it all start? Uh, my goodness. So if I can share about how it all started, I think that might be a little bit more concise. So I was, you know, just a kid minding my business. And I was actually scouted at uh, Rosebank Mall in Johannesburg. I was nine years old walking with my cousin and some lady just walked up to her and said, bring this this kid for, for modeling. Um, and that's how I started working. Um, I joined an agency when I was 12 years old. Um, so I did modeling until I was about 16. And then after 16, I was scouted again on Facebook. Um, there was, he used to be a casting director for Bomb Productions, the production company that did, um, Ushaga, Ilembe, and Red Ink, actually. Um, so his name is Gutlano Ditsele. He contacted me on Facebook and he kept on saying, you need to be on TV, you need to be on TV. So, um, eventually I went for an audition and that was my first commercial and that was like over 11 years ago, so. When did you take the decision? That you wanted to be an actress? Well, I always wanted to be an actress, but my yeah. parents didn't believe in, in you know, the entertainment industry as, as something that I should be doing for a living. Um, so I actually studied journalism, but after getting a few opportunities when I was in first year, I just made the decision by myself that I would just continue that way and um, abandon my, my journalism studies. And so, yeah, I've been full time since then. Yeah, so as long as I've known you, yeah, you have been determined to be an actress <laughs> from day one. This, yeah, this might be true, yeah. How did you navigate the family aspect? Like you're saying, they wanted, I assume, something more serious, more your accounting, your engineering, etc. They et wanted something more serious, my goodness, my job is so serious. <laughs> um, you, you but know, I understand you. where you're coming from, which is where they're coming from, and it, it's that thing of... Um, Parents have the right to voice their opinions about what you're going to do with your life because they're concerned for you, for your well-being. And um, they want to know that you're going to be doing something that is um, healthy, safe, um, something that will sustain you for the rest of your life and, and your offspring if you do choose to have kids. And the entertainment industry is, is not, you know, um, there's no consistency. There's no guarantees. Um, you basically, you're at the mercy of people's opinions with every project that you do. Um, success is not something that can be predicted. Um, it's kind of like whether people like your performance or not, which is, which is very flip floppy. Um, so I understand their concerns and how I navigated it is that I didn't navigate it. I just focused on what I believed my purpose was and what my goals were. So I, I didn't navigate it. They either had to accept what was bound to happen or continue to fight me while it happened. Um, so I can't say I had a strategy for family or anything like that. I just kept on doing what I believed in until they gave up or could see that, no, she's actually, she's serious about it. There's something that can be made here. Um, she's safe where she is. And, um, 
yeah so no strategy just just keep going toward your goal yeah now let's touch on the modeling one i know your career there was short but what are the opportunities in the modeling industry and where should a person like you that was approached what should they be worried about and what should they pursue i think with anything entertainment related there's always going to be like bad people, people with ill intentions, um, you know, there is money involved, there are contracts involved, you're dealing with either local or international um, brands, and you just need to be on top of the business aspect of it, because all the public usually sees is the end product, and acclaim, and all of those things, which which is like the last, the la- yeah, it's the end of the cycle, but there's so much business, um, knowledge that you need to have an understanding of how things work and contracts especially because when things go wrong on on set um you need to be able to say what is in your contract and you need to be able to have contracts that defend you as an artist so i think for me that's the most important thing um and then beyond that just taking care of yourself like you that's that's the thing about being an artist like instead of having a business outside of you, when you're an artist, you are the business, like you're, you're the whole thing. So, and you need to manage all of that. So I think that's the most important thing, not forgetting the business aspect of it. Tabo Besta was, oh, it, 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 it was, it was something along those lines, right? Where he was recruiting models yes. or something agency. Yes. So those are things that we need to be. Characters like that. Yes. And I have come across a few Tabo Besters. I really have. What are the signs that a person should um, look for? You know, small small things like meeting places where people organize meetings. The environment at those meetings. Like you can tell when you're sitting somewhere if like this is serious or not. And the, the thing is with entertainment, it's difficult because we're not in offices. So we can meet at like a restaurant, have a coffee and discuss a contract. That's normal. But, you know, if you go to a meeting, now there's alcohol, now there's, like, multiple people around. Not everyone is really talking about business. It's kind of, it's not so serious. Then you kind of know that, like, mm. you decide how serious you want your work environment to be because it can get very unserious in the entertainment industry. Yeah. Okay. Now, the acting industry. Yeah. Can you lay out, can you give us an overview as to, who the role players are, what does who does what? Because I mean, from our side, fine, we know there's a producer, cameraman, and the actress. So, do you actor. mean in like a uh, film? Yes, yes, yes. Or so, who are the roles? Do you, okay? So, give me a scenario like on set or. Okay. So we'd say that um, in the production component, mm-hmm. they would be a. Your is it a back? Round actress, actresses, extras, yeah, yeah extras. Actors, yeah. They would be a I don't know your, your makeup people. On set, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you want to know on set like who are the key players Industry, on a set? There's um, so many. There's the so many people. Um, so you the, can the have producers on set. Sorry. The people that also exploit because I mean there's a thing that um. Hey, one question at a time. Huh? Okay, fine, fair enough. So where do you want to start on set? Yeah, let's start there. Okay, so on set, there's a lot of people. Um, You can have more than 100 people on set and, and find that everyone actually needs to be there. So, of course, there's the actors that need to be there to perform the scenes. Um, You usually have extras as well. You can have from five to 100 extras or more, depending on what you're shooting. Um, You need your director. You need your first AD assistant director. You need um the people that are going to be involved in the recording. So that's your DOP. Um, you got to have your sound DLP. guy, DOP, I'm um, director of photography, cinematographer. Okay. You got to have your sound guy. You got to have your boom operator. You got to have the clapper. You, there's so many people. There, there's so many people and terminology that's not like um, generally understood by the public. But um, there's a lot of key players on set. So many people are involved. My goodness. So many. And they're all important. Um, like you can't take any department for granted. There's catering, obviously there's makeup and wardrobe. Um, so many, so many things, even actors have assistants on set as well. It's necessary these days, especially with the rise of, um, 
you know, like sexual harassment cases and whatnot. Like a lot of actors need more eyes on the set, even outside of um, intimacy coaches um, for protection, because also as much as women are vulnerable to this, and I think men are also vulnerable to it, but male actors have become very nervous to do their job. You know what I'm saying? Because of, of the things that have happened. Um, and yeah. With regards to the intimacy and those scenes that are very sexual, how, how do you guys navigate that? So usually, um, you know, in, in the, in the most recent times, it wasn't always like that. There should be an intimacy coach. So someone is hired to come to set and go through the scenes with the actors and say, you know, create an environment where you both feel comfortable to do whatever the script is asking you guys to do and create parameters and say, okay, you're allowed to go here. You're not allowed to go there. And also facilitate the agreement between the actors of you can touch me here. You can't touch me here. You can do this. You can't do that. So that's what they're there for. Um, and, also to be the eyes as well, because everyone else is working. Huh? Um, so that's something that, that I think has helped a lot with, with intimacy and sex scenes and all of that. Do people follow them, both actors and actresses? From um, my experience, yes. Oh, okay. I, I would imagine it would be a huge um, problem if an actor refused. Yeah, but also, I mean, you have heard of stories more al along your your Me Too, your Me Too movement, which um, a lot of people have come on set and say, or come out to say, no, on set, yeah, one, two, three yeah. happen. Yeah. So such things are being mediated by such. Um. Well, hopefully, there's nothing to mediate because that's prevention. Okay. So if we haven't prevented it, then that becomes a case. Then you know, and then it's how, another story. From a personal aspect. How do you navigate that sexual scene? I mean, you are in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Your partner, and I mean, recently now in Red Ink, there was a sexual scene from him. That does he not feel some type of way? I'd feel some type of way. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's yes, it's work. Mm -hmm. But I mean, <laughs> so both my partner and I are, are artists. Okay. We're directors and actors, and. Um, I think, you know, when you go to work and obviously work and your private life, um, they, they, they intertwine in a way. It matters what you do for work, um, for your personal life. It has, it has an effect. But I'm grateful to have a very mature partner. Um, I think I too, myself, I'm a very mature partner. And we understand that work is work. And, you know, coming home is coming home. And we don't mix the two. So, yeah. He understands that I'm playing a character. I'm not I'm not doing that as myself. Yeah. I'm doing that in the character. Um it's a performance. You know, it's not something you're doing just out of your own wanting. Um yeah, so it's maturity at the end of the day. And I know a lot of people get like all you know, they feel funny and they're like, "Oh my goodness, how could you guys do that?" And but that that's part of the job, guys. I'm telling a story, you know. And it's not Mobile's story, that is Lucy's story. And Lucy's story exists between action and cut. Okay. So those things don't exist outside of action and cut. They belong to Lucy. They don't belong to me. But as a performer, my, my body is a tool for my work. So I can't be in a relationship with someone who doesn't understand that. Yeah. yeah. Now, the other aspect of the industry, one that we generally hear of, artists are being exploited yes how real is that to what extent oh my goodness it's been happening to to south african performers for decades and um thank goodness there is the south african guild of actors um and they are really pushing forward with with the intent to pass the bills that will protect actors and create an environment where we're able to negotiate fairly with streamers, where we're able to be fairly compensated um, royalties wise, because actors in South Africa don't get royalties. Your show, you could shoot something, let's say in the year 2000, it could be playing up to this year and you don't earn any royalties. And that's insane. So you would get paid for... For your performance. The time, for that day. Yes. For January the 10th and then... Yes. And they can continue playing it in South Africa or wherever in the world 
and you don't get a cent. So there is the Copyright Act. I assume that it tends to that to some extent. Well, mm-hmm. clearly not sufficiently, mm-hmm. which is why they've also been the amendment. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of outcry there. What's the outcry about? Like, what is this Copyright Amendment Bill not doing correctly to protect artists? So they're trying to get the bills passed. Yeah. They haven't been passed. They've been campaigning for years. But they get pushback because if actors get more rights that benefit them financially, it means producers have to pay them more. It means streamers have to pay them more. So it's a fight for money at the end of the day. But the thing is, the condition, the financial condition of the artist, of the actor especially, um, in this case, we're speaking about actors because that's my industry. The financial condition of the actor is very poor. Is very poor. So it's, 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 it's an emergency, if I can say that. Um, and that's why actors are so vocal about it. Because we have no, we have no power to negotiate rates, to negotiate contracts to negotiate anything that has to do with our likeness being used in productions. Like medical aid. There's no medical aid. There's no benefits. There's nothing. You get paid for your time at work. Stop. And they can play that and earn on that for years to come. So if you were to draft a bill or decide how it should be, how would it look like? Um, in terms the of same, even, even if it's percentage or what? My goodness, that's to, to that's a question it. that needs like homework. Okay, fine. Um, but to to put it to put it you know plainly, give give the actor some some rights. Give give them a fair chance. Um, it it can't be that we live in a country with such a, a huge and flourishing entertainment industry, and actors don't have rights. It doesn't make any sense. We are on set every single day, year after year. We are getting awards overseas. Our work is being recognized globally. And the artist doesn't have any rights that protect them financially. How is it done in the States, in Hollywood? And I'm not sure how it's done in Hollywood. I don't work there. Oh. But I know that they have their own, str- they, they have their own struggles as pay. well. Because they went on strike last year. They were on strike for very for months. They weren't shooting. Writers did not work in America for months. They were on strike. Okay. I don't, I don't but know. I they, thought, you yeah. see, the difference with them is that they're unionized. We're not even allowed to have unions. We're not even allowed to have unions. That is the law in this country. Not we're not allowed to unionize. Okay. Mm. And from a recognition aspect, um, there has been the thing that internationally, our actors and actresses get more recognition, I guess, even in the music industry, Mm -hmm. than we do locally. From your experience, has has that been the case? Mm, I can't speak about, like, say, the music industry um, or theater even, because I'm not in that space. But I I can use myself as an example, and with myself that is true. Um, if we're just gonna speak in terms of awards, I have nine nominations, six wins, and four of my awards are international. So I think if I'm using myself as an example, then that is true. Um, but there's so many different individuals with different stories, of course. Um, but I would tend to agree with that. But we don't have as many platforms. Do you know what I mean? South Africa um, South Africa is a small country. Well, let me say medium. Okay. Um, if you were to compare it to a Nigeria, for example, Nigeria has a quarter of a billion people population-wise. So artists have a lot of audience to gain support from. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. You can really create a superstar in Nigeria, just Nigeria. We have, what, 55 to 60 million people? And there's so many different cultures in South Africa as well. Yes, so we're, we're divided. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just the cultures, the languages as well. Further further division. Um, 
So you can't compete like with people like in like actors in Nigeria. Like that's a super, super, superstar. But they have the population to support that superstar. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, there's so many different bits and pieces and, you know, ways that it works. But in the biggest scheme of things, like even in America, for example, if you make it, make it in one state you can be set for life. You don't need to be known outside of your state. If you can just make it in your... America's huge, dude. America's massive. Just think, New York, LA, Cleveland, Ohio. I can go on and on and on and on and on and on. South Africa, you don't have a lot of that. You kind of say Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban, PE, and then it just starts to go... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> in terms of entertainment, do you understand what I'm saying? How how do we expand to have a Mbumalanga to cultivate the... the, the I love growth. that you mentioned Mbumalanga because um, I actually was involved in, not the first, um, but the first on Mzansi Magic, um, their first Isndebele series. It was called Komkulu and... Um, that happening beginning of last year is just a reflection of we're still in the stage of firsts because we're such a diverse nation. It's going to take a long time. You see, the difference between South Africa and Nigeria, like, fine, they speak like English and Pidgin, but they understand each other. So most of their art can be spoken in the same dialect, in the same language, and everyone understands, therefore they can support because they relate. We don't have that. When we have a series in Isulu, then the Bele people don't understand what's happening. The closer people don't understand what's happening. So it's either we mix everything or we we allocate, okay, here's here's your closer, here's your Zulu, here's your do you understand what I'm saying? But it's gonna take a longer time to develop the industry as a whole because we're so diverse. Which is not positive or negative. It just is what it is. Um so yeah, South Africa is a special case, but you can't you can't compare because it's not we don't have the same margins and yeah, ways of describing and allocating things as and other countries. Like the per capita in terms of the affordability and the access for uh, a lot of people. Yes. Might not be there. Also, I, I'm not sure it should be the priority. Like I would love for the arts to grow and whatnot. I love that, of course. Um but South Africa has real, we've got real humanitarian issues that we need to address before entertaining people or while we're entertaining people rather, yeah. which is why I try to mix the two in my work. We did. Okay. Yeah. How do you do that? I gravitate towards um, roles and storylines that have a humanitarian, uh, humanitarian value in them. Um, I I I don't believe I'm supposed to entertain just for the sake of entertainment. I would like for the audience to I would like for the audience to take something away or learn from it or heal or heal from a certain um issue or circumstance that they're going through. I don't believe I'm just here to to make people excited or happy. There needs to be something else going on because it's necessary. It's necessary in this country. So you've also touched on directing yeah can you walk us through your 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 career there um in terms of directing i've directed two pieces i directed a documentary um and basically this was a documentary what we wanted to do when we formed the production company in 2020 i did it during the the pandemic is cover social issues one country at a time and starting in south africa obviously because i live here um so we had four different episodes in one documentary and in that documentary we did femicide we did the cost of homophobia in the fight against poverty in africa we had uh homophobia as well and in the last episode i actually found you know these boys um these young boys that you see usually when you're driving at the yeah. robot they, they're dancing with the beer crates so i like scouted uh, like those they're very guys. talented. Yeah, they're no, no, very talented. talent there. Yeah. Okay. So I scouted a few of them. I drove around different areas, and then I found like some some kids that I really I, I gravitated towards, and they were from Alex. So um, we picked like three of them of the group, and. 
we interviewed them, we went back home with them, found out their backgrounds, why they dance, what's going on at home, what's going on at school, and basically designed the episode around their lives, but against the backdrop of the fact that what we're saying to the nation, the adult nation now, is that this is the future of our country, and this is the condition that they're living in. And these are the issues that we're dealing with in the three previous episodes. So, um, you know, what what South Africa are we leaving them to lead? Um, so that was the documentary, and it's called Beauty for Ashes. Um, and then I did a short film as well. Short film spoke about human trafficking, international human, human trafficking, and um, the storyline is about a, a foreigner who needs who needs a kidney. Um, so he comes, he comes looking for, for a kidney cause he's dying. And, um, you know, basically there's, there's these organizations that provide body parts. They use children sometimes. So that's what the short film is based on. Yeah. When does it become a, a movie, a short film, the difference between a series and a show? Oh, so, uh, short film should be around 15 to 20 minutes. Short film, 15 to 20 minutes. Feature film um, should be around 90 minutes. So that's just duration. Um, and then series, of course, consists of episodes. So you can have a limited series, which is between 6 and 12 episodes, I believe. Okay. You have your telenovelas, which go on for months, and then your soapies, which never ends. That's your Monday to Friday forever and ever. You explained indirectly as to why actress or why you became an actor why am i an actor yeah like what's inspired it where does the drive come from well i believe god's given me the gift of storytelling first of all um i've been told you know you hear things when you're young like when i was in grade one i was cast as the lead angel because i had a big voice and those are like small silly things but you grow up and you keep hearing the same thing um And I just, I always performed in school. It was just something that came natural to me and something that I enjoyed. So for me, it was obvious, like, uh, just continue doing what I love and what people say I'm I'm good at um, and try to use those gifts to benefit or or to educate or to enlighten about certain topics. Um, Yeah, I think, I think the vanity of the industry is something that obviously a lot of people get caught up in but I I don't really have a desire to be involved in that um because I live in a country where there's 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 a lot of there's a lot of issues there's a lot of education that needs to happen um amongst us and healing so if I can use it for that I'd, I'd feel much more fulfilled yeah okay excellent and we are obviously in an election year yes when you mark your when you make your ex we're not going to ask who for what are the things you are going to consider and what are the things you think people should consider? It's it's difficult. It's difficult because I think South Africa is in a major transition period and a lot of things are not clear. And a part of the things that are not clear is an individual or individuals who can give us their clear vision for the country people who can really diagnose the issues and explain to us and tell us what what are their suggestions to remedy um because there's huge division there's there's high unemployment um a lot of people are poverty stricken um the health sector is under strain the crime is high i could go on and on and on but i i think my main thing is that I just, I need leaders to show leadership. I need leaders to care about the people that they lead, that they are appointed to govern. That's what I need. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I expect to see. So if you want my vote, I need to see that. I need, I need evidence um, of the intent to do that once you're in leadership and I don't think we see a lot of it which is very sad because South Africa really needs leadership yeah, yeah. let's let's so let's hope that um through the manifestos which will give you guys a breakdown of that we are able to put forward what everyone has to offer and 
in that we do have the answers yeah, as to how to move forward. The performance protection draft bill, mm -hmm. how familiar are you with it? Do, do, you, do you know what it aims to achieve? Um, it's what we discussed earlier. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's the rights of actors. We want the right to be able to negotiate fair contracts with streamers and producers and production companies. We want to be fairly compensated for our work, which includes royalties. We want to be protected in, in the ways that other actors are protected in other countries. These bills are not, are not something new in the world. When, when, we're not revolutionary in trying, to, in trying to request these things. And South it's Africa, overdue. yes, it's very much overdue. And South Africa is celebrated as having one of the most beautiful and, and forward, 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 um, forward moving or thinking constitutions. But Gashota, we need to catch up in other ways. So if if we claim to protect people and their human rights, let's follow through with everyone. Okay. There's no need to leave the entertainment industry behind or actors behind. It makes no sense. Yeah, I hope that gets resolved soon. Like yeah, soon. I hope so too. So what can your followers expect moving in, in the future? Followers is a strange term. I just hope to always produce work that resonates, that is a catalyst for healing, that educates. Um, you know, I, I, I believe that there is healing through art because it has happened for me through so many works that I've, I've seen consumed, um, been introduced to. So I hope that my work has the same impact on other people. Um, and I think it's, it's a blessing. It's a huge blessing that I work in this country during this time because the industry is opening up a lot. There are a lot of opportunities. Um, but while we entertain, we must also recognize that there's a lot of healing that needs to happen in South Africa. And that's part of our responsibility. Um, so yeah, I just hope to produce amazing work continually. I the, the the signature is excellence. That's my hope, yeah. What has been your most touching scene or moment series in your career thus far? What do you mean touching in a, like a positive way because there's tragedy and then there's like love. Okay, and... give us best and worst. Um ah, uh, whether it's tragedy or love. For a long time for many years the most heartbreaking scene I had ever shot was a scene I had to shoot in my first feature film, which was um, a film called Uncovered. My character, Aluta, um, finds her sister dead in the house, murdered. And that that scene tore me apart um, for many years. Really? Uh, yeah. And... Because um, yes. mm -hmm. I have sisters. Okay. And I worked with an acting coach. And she let me know straight up, like, this is what you need to do to achieve what needs to be achieved in this scene. And I don't want to do it. She told me, you need to go out to a field out in Muldersdrift or wherever, and you need to scream for me a soul. And I was like, lady, that's a bit, woohoo. Um, but she said that, so either you're going to do it or you, you're just going to pretend. And I was like, I don't want to pretend, obviously. I want to do it. So I did the exercise. So I found my soul cry. And... After I found that, obviously, the day came on set where I had to give the performance. And I resisted because the place where that comes from is, is, um, is very heavy. It's, it's very dark. Um, and it's very heartbreaking. So I did that scene in one take, but it haunted me for years. It haunted me for years. Um, but there is a scene that overtakes that. Um, <laughs> After Red Ink, but that episode hasn't aired yet, so I can't I can't say. Um, it probably will have aired by the time this comes out, but it's tragedy as well. Yeah. But when we see it, we'll know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No man, thank you for making time for us. Thank um, you. No worries. Guys, um, tune in. Don't forget to watch Red Ink. 
what we will do is we'll make sure that there's a link or even the title of all of the work you've done so that your followers and our followers can also tune in yeah guys thank you don't forget to like subscribe share tune in same time same place next week